Well, there's not much of an update. I, you know, last time we talked, I told you I had, I had went ahead and started a started a fencing business, and apparently it takes a lot of your time. <laughs> so yeah, I started full time uh, in Feb in February of 2023. So we just had a just had the first year anniversary of the business, but you know the the pretty much the idea. I mean the point of view that I was taking was, you know, take, set myself up, take care of things financially. That way I can put more into the dogs, um, in future years, but, and it sure is, and it getting, getting something started like this, especially like a service-based business, it's, it takes a lot right at the, right out the gate. So my time with the dogs has definitely suffered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you know what, um, do you ever listen to the dogmans or uh, what's it called? The hunting dog podcast, uh, Ronnie Bames podcast. So he got real popular. Have you ever heard of that show Meat Eater? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he's uh he's one of one of their guys. It's the Hunting Dog Podcast. It's in uh, association with the Meat Eater Podcast, and uh, he I think yeah, he he's an older guy. Ronnie Bame is is the host of that one, and um he's been doing it I think since about I think I started listening to him in 2018. But he deals almost exclusively with bird dogs. I mean, it's a good listen, but one of the things that I that I took from that, or the, like listening to that, he has a lot of his friends on, a lot of, you know, big bird dog guys, uh, NAVDA, the North American Hunting Dog Association. Um, all the guys on there, they all kind of had this, like a similar story. Like they started hunt dogs when they were younger with their dad or whatever. Um, they got into it over the years. They ended up having to buckle down and get to work and do some other stuff. So a lot of them ended up getting out of dogs completely. And then once they got established, they jumped right back into it. So I remember thinking, like, I hope that never happens to me, but it looks like it's kind of happening. <laughs> I mean, I still spend a bunch of time with them, but as far as planning big hunts and stuff like that, it hasn't been, I haven't been doing that pretty often. And uh, yeah, you know what? I, I hadn't even been on, I hadn't been on Instagram or anything lately. I, my yard took a pretty big hit. Um yeah, so, um, I so I had a you, you remember the stag hound Ivo that I had the one that kind of start got me into stags. Yeah. Okay, so he was I got him in 2019 and he was amazing right out the gate. Even at three months old, he was already able to jump on the bed of a truck, which usually my other dogs it takes me about seven, eight, nine months before they're able to do stuff like that. Um, and then so I got him. So then I got a female a few months after that. Got another female. Um, had a litter out of them, kept some males, uh, sent, sent some dogs from him to family members that are also into hunting. And it got to the point where I, I had, I think I had six stags on my yard at one time and I was just having a blast. I was using them for everything from coon hunting all the way up to, of course, running coyotes on them, which I didn't do a whole lot of that. When I did run coyotes, I was going out with, with guys that have been doing it a long time and just kind of taking my dogs along just for, just for the experience, but doing it on my own, I didn't do a whole lot. But one thing that I found, they were so extremely, especially out here um, in West Texas where I do all the pig hunting. There's not a lot of big pig populations here, but the ones that are, that there's some really good hogs that are really good eating because they're eating off the ag fields and stuff. Um, and those stags were catching them. I, I would, a lot of the times I was just driving the roads around the farms, finding the pigs in the middle of the field and then just dropping the, dropping the dogs on them. And the stags would catch them so quick before they even got to the got to any brushy areas or rocky areas. So man, I was having the time of my life doing that. Um, Ivo, he he was just the best dog. He he caught a pig. He saved me from a pig. We we're in some really thick stuff, and he got caught up at one point really bad, and and he never gave up. And we ended up getting that pig, and it cost me a pretty penny taking him to the vet and getting them all stitched up and all that. But he was he was he was excellent. Unfortunately, last month Ivo passed away. Yeah, and the situation. So, three of my stags all passed away at the same time. Um, yeah. So I, so I, I do mostly fence restoration and staining. So usually during the winter time here, it gets pretty cold. So, um, my work slows down. And in my first year, you know, I mean, it slowed down to the point where I was like, you know, I, I need to start doing some other stuff too. So I took on a job. I was building a. I was building net wire fence. The job that I was on was 200 miles or just about 150 miles away from home. So I was staying um, at my parents' place that they live about 45 miles from that job. So I went and stayed for the week. 
Um, I only took my little powder Dale with me. And uh, so uh, my wife was taking care of the dogs back at our back at the property. And then so on that Friday, after I finished the job, I went ahead and decided to stay the weekend with my parents. So my wife drove down from Friday to Sunday. So we were taking care of, a, of another stag that I had. Um, and he was full stag, a big white dog. And that dog had a real bad habit. He was just dead set on escaping. And so we had him in a kennel and um, he found he, he basically busted the the ties on the chain link from that kennel and squeezed his way out from underneath. Then he went to the main gate where all the I have I have Ivo and all my main dogs just running loose on the three acre section. And um, he went to the main gate and opened the main gate and my wife had secured it with a rope. We should have put a chain on it, but it's just we had so many things going on. He chewed through the rope and uh, let all my stags out that were running loose. So over the course of two days, they, they went off trying to find something to hunt. And every single one of them got killed on the, on the main highway that we live close to. And Ivo, Ivo included. So we came back and I had just got a load of chickens. So I was putting the chickens up and I noticed the gate was open. But my Airedales and I still have three Airedales. And they were they were in their pan just fine. Everything was good, but the stags were missing. And I had that pit in my stomach. And the next morning, drove in, I drove up and down and found all three of them spread out from each other. And so, yeah, now at this point right now, I'm completely stagless. Yeah, so it's it was pretty rough. And it, I didn't even post about it or anything. I just kept it to myself for a little bit. And um, The only plus side is I have a... So I, we had just had a, a small litter. We had a litter of four stag pups and I'm going to be keeping a female from that litter. And so she's actually, um, she, she's a daughter of Ivo and, um, but her mom was also a half, uh, well, let's see, I guess it, if you put it in people terms, it would be a cousin to Ivo. So he, she's got Ivo on both sides of her now. And so we're just gonna, like I said, I'm, I'm not jumping straight back into hunts and stuff at this point, but by the time she's two, three years old, then I'll still put her through all the tests and make sure she's gritty and make sure she's worthy of breeding. But whenever that comes, I think by that time, you know, in about two, three years from now, I'll be hopefully jumping back into full bone hog hunting. And I think I found a guy uh, pretty close by in the next town over. He breeds some really, really um, hardcore American bulldogs. So, and he told me, you know, we, we had planned on maybe crossing a bulldog to a stag at some point, maybe Ivo to one of his females. Um, but I think at this point, now that Ivo's gone, that, that female that I kept from Ivo, if she shows some good signs, I think I'll probably breed her to one of his uh, big bulldogs, the American one, the American bulldogs. And from there, I just try my hand at bull lurchers for a little bit. So, I, so I, that's kind of been what I've been geeking out about, just looking at the different bull crosses. So, if she comes out anything like Ivo, I'll be able to cross her to anything and and fingers crossed get get some some good working dogs out of out of that. But as far as the stags go, that's that's all my plans for the future. I've I've got no plans to run a team of them on coyotes anymore or anything. Even on pigs, they they're as good as they were, they did get cut up pretty good. So I kind of wanted to add some bully in there to to toughen them up and and uh, put some meat on them a little bit. Same, same thing. Um, right now, like I said, I'm just kind of, I took a break from breeding and from doing anything like that. So my dogs, I'm just working them out when I can. I've got a couple marathons that I'm going to run this year. So um, just taking them with me on marathon training and uh, just kind of letting them just live a good life here. And then, of course, you know, all, even though I slowed down hunting, I still went coon hunting every single week during this winter. So they're, they're still getting worked. Vango, my main dog, um, the one that everybody sees from the video, he's a, uh, he just turned seven last month. So he's, I've got, I've got a few years of just regular coon hunts. I think he's at this point, he is retired from pig hunting though. Um, if I lost him or something happened to him on a pig hunt at his age, I would just, I would regret it. So I'm uh, taking a break from pig hunting, but he's, they're all doing good. I have a, a female lined up from South Texas that we're trying to work out the logistics of it to get them bred the timing, right. To get, but she's a really good hog hunting female. And um, yeah, if everything works out, maybe by the end of this year or early next year, I'll have that cross from them. And uh, we'll see, we'll see where I'm at, but I'm planning on at least getting a few from there and at, at the very least placing them locally to where I have access to them. Uh, well, you know, 
r- recently. I, I mean, I, I there, there's a few accounts that I just I look around at on Instagram and, and Facebook that I follow and just kind of keep up with what they're doing. And and that always interests me. But one thing that I'm I am obsessed with my little Patterdale. Um, I don't know if I told uh, last time we talked, I don't think I had had them yet. Yeah. So um, are you have you ever uh, talked to Josh Pape? He's in Northern California. Let's Creek Von Pop Pape, I think, is his Instagram handle, and he's he's got he's got a Kangle, he's got a bunch of Airedales. Um, he had a stag from me at one point that didn't end up turning out, but and then he's got his Patterdales and Jags, and or the Yacht Terriers, and so he's a, he's a, he's a big hunting dog guy. So, anyways, he had gotten a uh, he got a mail from a really good line of Patterdales, a red male named Aries. And he put that little dog on everything. Um, it was just a, and then he was all, he's also a former military guy. Um, so, um, and he was disabled from, I mean, he's, I get, I, I don't know exactly the, the right terms, but he was able to uh, certify that little Patterdale as a service dog. So he takes him on flights. He takes him everywhere. So I got to meet that dog when he came down and picked up the sag for me and I fell in love with him. And the only thing was that dog was, uh, Aries is getting old at that point. So he ended up line breeding him to a daughter of his and he was able to produce two little male pups two two little red bean looking things and he was uh we we're talking about it he's like i have one for you nope i'll just give them to you just figure out how you want to get them and so i was thinking it over and i was so busy i had so many dogs in my yard at the time i i didn't even think about wanting to fool around with a terrier just yet a, a small one like that but he kind of talked me into it and then i went through his profile and looked at all the all the Airedales and then his, his line of, uh, I mean, his Patterdales and his line of Patterdale um, are directly related to the Patterdales that everybody sees on the Cali Catchers page. And then, so I would go to Cali Catchers, look at all the, all of the relatives of the pup that I was potentially going to get. And I just got excited about it. So finally I was like, I'm down just however. And it turns out he's got some rent houses that he, in the Dallas area here in Texas, and he was passing right through Lubbock um, in November of 2022. And so he passed by with his family. We stopped and hung out, and he gave me the little pup. So I, I got that little red Patterdale. He looked like a little red kidney bean, so I named him Beans. And immediately, he's been like my little fun project. I, I put him on everything. I put on, put him on little jackrabbits. I would go shoot jackrabbits. I shoot jackrabbits all the time for my dogs just to throw in some meat and bone and fur in their diet every every so often. Um so some of the jackrabbits that I shoot, you know, I'd get them a little bit far back or whatever. And, you know, instead of walking up and popping them, I would let my little Patterdale just go and grab them first. Or after they were dead, let them go and track them down and, and he would grab them, shake them up. Then I put them on squirrels. I hunt, I hunt squirrels with slingshots that I make myself. And so some of the squirrels that I'd pop out of the tree, I'd, he would jump on them and f- either finish them off or just shake them up after they were dead. So he, his pride, prey drive is through the roof. He's basically like a little pit bull, like a little game dog. And uh, then started hunting prairie dogs, same way with slingshots and pop them. It, it's really hard to hunt them because they, they, they are never too far from their holes. But I would, uh, I use a three eighths of an inch ball bearing, steel ball bearings for my uh, slingshot ammo. And if I hit them, if I hit them right in the head and neck area, they'll drop. And a lot of times I have to shoot them from kind of a far distance. So, so it's not rare for me to be taking 30 yard shots with a slingshot. And so, so sometimes it'll kind of knock out the prairie dogs first. And then by the time I, I run up there, they kind of woke back up and jump back into their holes. So beans has eliminated that problem for me. As soon as I don't even have to hold him, he's so well trained. Now I can just say, wait, 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 I'll pop this, the prairie dog. And immediately he's, he's, uh, as soon as he hears the shot, he's on him. And so we, we get a lot of prairie dogs around here too. And then, um, same and just having fun digging up pack rats. That's been my favorite thing to do now. Part of the reason I took that job over there, um, that was far from my place is because my family has a little plot of land out there and it's overrun with pack rats. So we would just go find the nests. I would dig them out and he'd pull them out. And you know, those pack rat pats, rat, pack rats, they're big. They're, they're like the size of a big ham of a, of a guinea pig almost. So it was, it's just, I've had loads of fun with this little powder dill. And I don't know. I, at this point, I'm not planning on getting any or, or getting into Patterdales just yet, but I think at some point in the future, I found a girl um, that she hunts. She's got you know Yag Terriers and Pitbulls and Patterdales, and everything I see online from her dogs, 
they look top notch. So I think if I was going to get a female, I would probably get it from her. I'd heard some, I'd heard some things about Patterdales that some, sometimes some people say they're extremely annoying around the house and some people say they're good, but I, I, he is, he's our constant companion. I, he's right here on the floor curled up right with me right now. Um, I take him everywhere. Even if I'm just going to the, to tractor supply to get some dog food or, or on certain jobs that I'm able to take him with me, he's with me. Um, so I take him everywhere. So I think the fact that I spend so much time with him has made him, you know, to be a super well-behaved dog. So as far as I, I can't speak on, like, this is my first and only Patterdale I've ever had. So I don't know about them as a whole, but this guy's really, really good. I definitely see that he, he's, he's such a good little dog. I've, I've been enjoying him so much. Um, whenever, and, and, What's, what was surprising, his prey drive is through the roof, and I kind of messed up because whenever I first got him, I didn't have any chickens on my yard, and I didn't have I didn't have plans to have any, so I would, and I'm addicted to shooting my slingshot, so um, we have an invasive species of dove, the ringneck dove here, and you can shoot, since they're invasive, you can shoot them year-round, you don't have to wait till dove season, and they're good, they're big, they're, they're slightly bigger doves than like your regular white wing or morning dove. And so I'll pop a, I'll pop maybe three or four in a, in just in an hour with my slingshot. And then once I get about 12, we'll have a little fry and we'll, we'll fry those doves up for dinner. But so I do that. I do that pretty much year round. And, um, he would, he it would get to, whenever I got him as a pup, I would pop the doves off out of the trees or out of the bushes and he would go retrieve them and I would feed them the heads. So I thought that maybe I ruined them from being able to be around chickens. So whenever I, I decided, me, my wife was really wanting chickens and some laying hens. So I went and got a whole load of them. So the first first two days were without issue. I let him, I was teaching him, let him know that he not allowed to touch the chickens, you know. And one morning I let him out just to go use the rest so he can go relieve himself. And I kind of went back to bed. So when I woke up, he had killed four of my chickens and I had a big, I had a big black rooster that was huge. This rooster, I don't even know what, I think australorp or something i don't know i'm not good with the breeds of chickens but a big black rooster and from far it looks like a little a little, a little toddler wearing a hoodie he's so big and uh beans had him just about killed whenever i got out there he had killed four other ones and so i went and after that i i went i gave him a good little spanking <laughs> for that and uh and then i tied him up right there by the chicken coop and anytime he would look at him i would i would get i would correct him get mad at him and now he's to the point if the chickens are around him, he doesn't even like to make eye contact with the chicken. If he hears, if he even hears them squawking or anything, he goes the complete other way. The intelligence on on him is crazy. So yeah, now I trust him with the chickens. He's out there with them all day long, and it's good to go. Have you heard of Joseph Carter, the Mink Man? So he's he's an, I wouldn't say he's a friend of mine, but we we talk we've talked pretty often online. He was at one point thinking about getting an Airedale lurcher from me and. So I, I know him somewhat. So I know that he, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that he did the breeding himself, but I know at one point he had a Whippet Patterdale cross or he may still have her. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that little, I mean, he was using her for ratting and uh, she seemed like she's doing pretty good. So I always thought about that, like making a little Patterdale lurcher with a, what, a good, a good Whippet, but uh, it's so hard to find a good Whippet. It's, well, for me over here, it is. I, I wouldn't even know where to start, but I thought about that. Well, whenever before my before my stags got out and and died, um, my female stag had come into heat, and I just I wasn't going to do it, but I thought about I wonder what it would I wonder what size and what type of dog it would make if I were to kind of help them out and let them get up there and breed a, a full size stag hound. Yeah, so I don't know if that would have ever happened, but I would have it would have been interesting if for sure. The craziest one I saw because. Uh, my, I, my family builds fence. Um, that's, I grew up in the fence business. That's why I kind of naturally went back, went into it myself. But my dad told me about a rancher that he would run. He, I guess he had stags, but, he, um, before, but then he got really big into Irish wolfhounds. So I think he had like five or six Irish wolfhounds on his yard at all times. Well, it was on a big ranch and his wife had a, had a dachshund, a little male, a mini dachshund. And so one of the females, uh, his Irish wolfhounds had come into heat and he kept her, I guess, in a little shop. And I don't know if, how he did it, but she was laying down and uh, he, that little dachshund bred that female. And she had, I think they said she had nine pups from that dachshund. So it was the, 
one of the shortest dogs in the world crossed to the tallest dog in the world. And I, I, I never saw a picture of them. I only heard the story, but they said that some of them were, some of them were like large dogs and like around 70, 80 pounds. Some of them stayed about 30 pounds. Some had wire hair, some were short haired and everybody that saw them said they were the ugliest dogs they'd ever seen, but it would have been interesting. <laughs> Oh, uh, before I go, I wanted to give you a, a just a quick update. I, I, you remember the I had a, I think four litters of uh, of Airedale lurches, the, the stag dells that I was doing. So whenever I started getting busy with work, I had a croc that one that I I trained him myself, and and I made sure he was gritty and he was he was an excellent coon dog. But I hadn't gotten the chance to put him on pigs, and he had just turned. Let's see, he was going on three, and he was starting to get into. His, over the next few years getting into his athletic prime and so i i saw that i wasn't able to i wasn't using him to his full potential so um a hog hunter out of central texas he got a hold of me and he was wanting to try a a, a stag or, or, i mean a uh airedale lurcher he had i think he may have heard about it from listening to you and um so i told him i said well you know what i, I don't i'm not going to be having any more litters for the foreseeable future. I said, but if you're interested, I have a dog that's full grown already and he's he's got a good nose, he's fast, he's got a good stamina. I said, you're more than welcome to come pick him up and try him out if you want. I said, and if you like him, then we can talk about, maybe I'll sell him to you. And, uh, but I didn't want to sell Croc and then him not end up being very good at pigs because I had no idea. And so he came and picked him up and he was sending me weekly updates this dog out of the box is doing everything that I want him to do. He said he runs with my curves, nose to the ground. He's finding his own pigs. And when he catches, he, that pig's not going anywhere. So um, he was sent. So I, I'm actually going to do a little. I, I've got, I told him, I said, that's great. And so I ended up, I ended up just telling him, you know what? If Croc's working for you, he's doing a lot better with you than he is sitting around out here with me. I said, just hang on to him. I don't want nothing for him. Just keep him. And so he was, I said, but on the condition, you've got to send me pictures and videos that way I can have those of Croc. And uh, so he was, so I've, I've got, I've got several good, good videos of Croc on pigs with running with his curs and, and yeah, everything was, everything was going good. The last update I got, he had gotten cut up pretty good. So I hadn't, he was, uh, he was in recovery for a little bit, the last I heard. And then now, you know, here in Texas, it gets hot right around this time of year. So I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get more updates as the as it starts to cool off a little bit. But as far as that made me pretty happy, and I I, I was actually going to reach out and tell you about him because I know you're curious about the Stagdells as well. But and as far as as far as I know, that one's doing extremely well. And this guy, he, he's one of those guys that hunts two, three, four times a week and takes out takes guests and clients out to go hog hunting with him. And and Cro so Crocs went straight into the thick of it and. By all means, I mean, from all I've heard, he's been excelling at it. So that made me pretty happy. For whatever reason, I never doubted that, you know, that that cross would not turn out in some way. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't either. I had, he was on coons with me and pigs with, with uh, that gentleman over there. So everything he's been on, he's passed all tests with flying colors. So that may be, maybe, I don't know if he was just, it was just the right breeding. But I don't know, maybe I'll return to that one of these days, but I'll have to find me a stag on par with Ivo before I do anything like that again. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, so far so good. I've I've been owner operator for this first year and it's been it's been good, but like I said, it's really busy. So but like I said, just just getting started. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, the first what, three, five years you're you're out there hustling. Oh man. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping with him, <laughs> hoping a little sooner than that. But I mean, even even whenever it gets to the point where I'm, I can hire somebody full time and and pay them well mm -hmm. enough to where they can show up every day and work hard. That that yeah. should be happening towards the middle of this year. So I think even just one or two other guys helping me out would would free me up quite a bit. So, anyways, put put your nose down and work hard. Good things happen. So that's yeah, all for sure, doing. for sure. Yeah, well, it's great to hear from you, Sean. Yeah, you too, man. Get some rest, and uh, we'll we'll do this again soon. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, have a good uh, rest of your night, and we'll, be, we'll keep in touch. Sounds good, bro. Thank you.
All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.